Some history on draft night. Zachary Richache and Alex Saar, the first ever duo born outside the United States to be drafted with the first two overall picks of an NBA draft. Following them, Reed Shepard to Houston, Stephon Castle to the Spurs, and Ron Holland the second to the Detroit Pistons at fifth overall. CBS Sports HQ is presented by Jeep. There's only one back here with Adam Finkelstein, Gary Parish, and Avery Johnson. Avery, the biggest winner from round one of the NBA draft. Who you got? I'm going with the Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay. And they've had a winning season, you know, to make it to the Western Conference Finals and now have an opportunity when they draft Rob Dillingham and then also Terrence Shannon Jr. They take Dillingham at 8, Terrence Shannon Jr. at 27, both elite scores, guys that can score at all three levels. They can play in transition in the half court. I just love this, especially when you look at with the needs of Minnesota, more bench help if you're going to continue to try to advance deep in the playoffs against the teams like the Dallas Mavericks and the Denver Nuggets and some of the up-and-coming teams, you have to have quality depth. They help with quality depth for Minnesota. And I think the biggest winner was the Los Angeles Lakers. By extension, J.J. Redick. I know a bunch of NBA coaches were sitting around tonight watching this. They don't always have the biggest voice in that draft room for a variety of reasons. And I promise you some of them are watching going, my franchise just took somebody who can't help me at all next season. You probably had that thought once or twice sitting through a draft as a coach. Well, if you're J.J. Redick, um, you're thinking the exact opposite of that. Not only did my front office go out and get me somebody who most people thought was a top 10 prospect in this draft, they got me somebody who is older and who is ready to play and help get my coaching career off to a significant and positive start. Uh, J.J. Redick in Los Angeles, they didn't draft some project to sit on his bench. They drafted somebody who, yeah, will probably come off of his bench, but come off his bench, be in the rotation, make shots from all over the court, and help Anthony Davis and LeBron James go wherever it is they're going. Cosine, everything he just said, uh, love what the Lakers did tonight. The other team that I think really helped themselves is Portland. Portland came into this with the seventh pick and the 14th pick. At number seven, they got the guy who had a chance to go number one, Donovan Klingon. They find their center of the future, a defensive rim protector extraordinaire, and someone who can really play an offensive structure. Seven foot two, he can dribble, he can pass, and he may be able to shoot down the road. Then, the underrated part of tonight, they got Denny Avdia with the 14th pick. Denny Abdia is 24 years old, and he had a breakout season last year for the Wizards. That's the same age as Dalton Connect. So we are talking about a great young asset, and now Portland, they had their backcourt figured out with Scoot Henderson, Shade, and Sharp, and Simons. Pieces may not fit great, but they've got talent in the backcourt. Now they've gone a long way to finishing off the front court, and I really like what the Trailblazers did tonight. You also uh, had Ron Holland, too, as your guy. Ron Holland is my guy. I, I, going, going to the Pistons. Detroit's got to figure out who can make a three on that team, but, <laughs> but Ron Holland is absolutely my guy, and I, I think that they are going to be very happy they invested in him. Shouts to you. Uh, a lot of teams, they, they made some head-scratching moves. We didn't know what they were doing. They're swinging. Perhaps they'll hit a home run. Perhaps they'll miss. You know, I'm not a big fan of calling teams losers or, or people losers, Avery. So I'm going to phrase the question this way. Who disappointed you the most in round one of the NBA draft? Well, I'm going to say who had one of the biggest question marks with their selection. I'm going to go with the Milwaukee Bucks, and that's my buddy Doc Rivers now. Uh, but, you know, when they drafted A.J. Johnson with the 23rd pick, Seems somewhat of a stretch for me. Kyle Filipowski was still there. I thought he would have been a nice fit. Uh, you know, yeah, Shireman that was there. I know he ended up going 30 to Boston. So, you know, I, I need to see more. Mm -hmm. And maybe I will in two or three years. But what I saw on film with this young man, I know he, he had an opportunity, I think, to go to Texas. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, I thought this was somewhat of a stretch. Yeah, I don't mean to double up, but I was surprised and disappointed, I guess, um, in what Milwaukee did, if only because you're watching the Celtics win a championship and then add somebody who can actually help. You watch the Knicks make a big move to get better, and then in Milwaukee, where you've got a core of, of Giannis and Dame, you select somebody who, with all due respect, on paper doesn't look like he's going to be able to help them in any meaningful way next season. Uh, the Bucks have flourished with a three-point shooting center who is aging. There's a three-point shooting center available to them. 
He's available tomorrow night. Cal Filipowski, that would have made more sense to me mm -hmm. at 23 than going in this direction. Um, you know, I bet you Giannis Antetokounmpo isn't as excited as he otherwise would have been sitting at home tonight watching this thing. Uh, not disappointed in, disappointed for. There you go. Kyle Filipowski and Tyler Kolek. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Kolek has been one of the best point guards in college basketball in each of the last two seasons. Um, I think there was a lot of buzz that he was going to be a first round pick tonight. I think he had earned that designation because of the fact that he's a maestro playing the pick and roll, because he's so important for a team's culture, because he's ultra tough. Again, those are the guys you don't want to bet against. But I'll tell you this. If you can get over that disappointment of the first night, there are a bunch of guys on the board in night two that are legitimate NBA players. There are also a bunch of guys who got picked tonight who are not going to be in the NBA next year. They may have guaranteed contracts, but they're going to be in the G League. I think whoever takes Tyler Kolek tomorrow night is getting an NBA player next year. My two biggest winners, the CBS Sports HQ graphics team. Yes. And... Gary Parrish's tie. Hey. Shouts to your wife for helping pick, pick <laughs> that out. She picked it out. I'll be I, honest. Every time, great. every time she starts putting stuff yep. together, I she look at it doing. and I go, are you sure? Yeah, she does. She, she does. says, just trust me. I've so met I, her. She's I, a lovely young, la young lady. I'm going to call her a young lady because I'm all respect here. Uh, uh, we, we're giving you an A+. Plus for oh, uh, every time. What people don't realize is the socks and shoes match, right. too. It's oh, incredible. buddy, I'll yeah. kick them up on the table. <laughs> no, every time I bring my wife around the bosses, they're all trying to figure out a show to put her on TV, too. Shouts to Mrs. Parrish. Appreciate you. And for more commentary on the NBA draft. Join Gary and Matt Norland of the I'm College Basketball Podcast recapping round one of the NBA draft delivering commentary. The I'm College Basketball Podcast. Download and follow today.